these things will be added unto you. and welcome. Greetings to the folks who are watching at home. It's good for us to be gathered together for worship. Uh, for those who are here with us, the, in the bulletin, some of the words to the songs are not correct. So we've got them fixed on the slides, and for people who are watching at home, you're not going to know the difference anyway. But, uh, so in the bulletin, some you might have to watch the, watch the slides instead of look at the bulletin. Uh, the uh, November newsletter is available. It's here in the sanctuary. Uh, it's on the website. It's also in the realtor box outside the church office. If you know of anyone who can't pick one up at the church or view it online, uh, please contact the church office and we'll make sure they're on our uh, USPS mail list. Please remember to give your fellow worshipers the six feet of space when you come up to receive communion. Uh, to help that along, we'll have the organ side come up first. So Carol, you gotta lead the way, it's all you. All right, she's up for the job. And then we'll have the pulpit side come up when they're finished. Our faith practice reading this past week was 1 Corinthians chapter eight. Paul writes about eating food sacrificed to idols. He says, knowledge puffs up, but love does what? Did anyone catch that? Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. That is correct. So there's a snicker bar here on the, on the speaker for you that you can claim, or a pair of reading glasses. We found those a couple weeks ago, but if anyone else missed the reading glasses, you have to claim them or trade them out for a snicker bar, I guess. Let's begin our time of worship with song. may live and die in you. 
Son, and Spirit ever blessed, the one in three, the three in one, the endless praise addressed. Will you please stand as you're able and join in the confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not alert for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus you are welcome. In Jesus you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the seventh chapter of Revelation. Emma Morgan is our virtual lector. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Re Revelation. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and all the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, God, singing, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are those robed in white, and where have they came from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who came, have come out of the great ordell. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worshiped him day and night within his temple. And one who is seated on the throne will shelter them will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne, there will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the strings of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Our second reading is from the third chapter of 1 John. Benjamin Summers is our virtual lector. Today's reading is from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us that is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not been yet revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This ends the reading. Our gospel clip comes from the fifth chapter of Matthew. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. 
He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Did you know that there's going to be a presidential election this week? Actually, I'd be worried if you didn't know. It seems impossible to avoid stepping in the muck that's been slung back and forth. Nastiness has turned to straight-up aggression in some cases. Instead of being mostly informed but generally disinterested in politics, I've found myself being stressed out. I've come to the point where I just can't read the news anymore because all of the negativity drags me down. Now, no matter where you stand on the political spectrum, I would guess that most of us are ready for this election year to be over. Voters on both sides feel frustrated, even embarrassed by it all. We've moved beyond challenging ideas and policies to character assassination and questions of foreign interference and accusations of voter fraud and threats of violence. I'm ready to be done with all that. And I'm willing to bet we're all ready for an end to the malice and tackiness of this election cycle. I've noticed there's not only election stress, but also a visceral fear, an intense anxiety about the results. Fear for our nation, fear for what lies ahead of us, fear for our children's future. What if so-and-so wins? What's going to happen if? Political commentators invent and expand on a multitude of scenarios, each one more frightening than the next. When we wake up on November 4th, what are we going to see? Four years ago, Max Lucado, a pastor and author, made a prediction. I shared part of his article then, and I'm going to borrow heavily from it again this year, because it still speaks to anxious hearts. A seminary professor once told me that the best sermon you preach is the one you preach to yourself. This is a message that I need to hear, and you get to come along for the ride. Lucado wrote, and I modify the date, I know exactly what November 4th will bring. Another day of God's perfect sovereignty. When we wake up on November 4th, whether all the ballots have been counted, whether we know the results or not, God will still be in charge. God's throne will still be occupied. God will still manage the affairs of the world. Never before has God's agenda depended on a king or a president or a ruler. And that's not going to change in this election cycle. Proverbs tell us 
The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wills. Scriptures tell us that on one occasion, the Lord turned the heart of the king of Assyria, Israel's hated enemy, so that he aided them in construction of the temple. On another occasion, God stirred the hearts of Cyrus, the Persian king, to release the Jews and allow them to return to Jerusalem. Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar was considered to be the mightiest king of his generation. But God humbled him and put him out of commission for seven years. The point is, God's rule has always been and always will be greater than any earthly kingdom. When we wake up on November 4th, we will find that God has not lost control nor abandoned us. Each side in this <clears throat> messy political process delights in describing how the sky will fall if the opposing candidate gets elected. But we have confidence that God is the ruler of the skies, and the sky won't fall unless God tells it to. The psalmist writes, For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. When we realize that our elections don't change the heart of God, no matter who receives the most electoral votes when this is all said and done, God is still king. God influences the hearts of all rulers, no matter who we pick. When we realize these things, then we can decide to pray for our elected leaders rather than fret about them. Rather than wring our hands, we can bend our knees. We can choose prayer over despair. In that way, an understanding of God's sovereignty leads to peace. That's what Jeremiah did. He was the prophet to Israel during one of the darkest periods of rebellion. He was called the weeping prophet because he wept at the condition of the people and the depravity of their faith. Jeremiah was so distraught that one of his books is entitled Lamentations, passionate expressions of grief or sorrow. When he considered the works of God, his attitude changed, however. This I call to mind, Jeremiah wrote, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. O Lord, great is your faithfulness. When we are tempted to lament the condition of the political climate in our country, or fret about candidates or fear election results, we would be wise to imitate Jeremiah. Lift up your eyes to God. Dare to believe that good things will happen. Dare to believe that God is speaking to us when Paul wrote, in everything, God works for the good of those who love him. In his article, Lucado shared a story about visiting the interior of Brazil. With a longtime missionary pilot, he flew a circuit of remote towns in a small plane, a plane that threatened to come undone with the slightest gust of wind. Wilbur and Orville had a sturdier aircraft. Looking at the condition of the plane around him and the ground far below, Lucado just couldn't get comfortable. He kept thinking that the, the plane was going to crash in some remote Brazilian jungle and he'd be attacked by piranha or swallowed by an anaconda. He kept shifting around and, and looking down and gripping his seat until his knuckles became white. Finally, the pilot had enough of his squirming and he looked at Lucado and shouted over the airplane noise, we won't face anything that I can't handle. You might as well trust me to fly the plane. As we approach election day, perhaps 
God would say the same thing to us. We won't face anything I can't handle. You might as well trust me to fly the plane. If so, make this your prayer. Dear Lord, you are perfect, perfect in ways we can't begin to understand. You are eternal, ever-existing creator of all things. You are sovereign, free from external control or outside authority. You are graceful and merciful in every way and every choice. You show love for your people. You have never failed, never. You are God. You will accomplish all things in your time. You are the king, supreme ruler, absolute monarch, and sovereign of all history. An arch of your eyebrow and a million angels will pivot and salute. Every throne is a footstool to yours. Every crown is a paper mache to yours. No limitations, uncertainties, questions, or regrets. You consult no clock. You keep no calendar. You report to no one. You are in charge. You are God, whom Jesus tells us to call Father, and I trust you. We might be afraid of what the future holds, but our faith teaches us that perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love is the name of God, the essence of who God is, not a metaphor, but a fact. In this fact, this love, we live and move and have our being. We are created as creatures of love, as a, as a fish, as a creature of the sea, breathing in love, breathing out love. Somehow, this existing in love, this turning from fear, makes those about to face the lions, or a presidential election, able to cry out in genuine joy. If God is for me, who can be against me? So when you get home, circle November 4th on your calendar and write these words. God is still in charge. Whatever else happens that day, you can be assured that much is true. Amen. Let us pray. 
longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose who sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your Son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Today we pray especially for Mark, Mary, Marvel, and all of those we name before you now, either aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, Countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in this past year. We remember Timothy Berger. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Bill Hetrick. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Harriet Tegmeyer. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Fritz Lau. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. Virgil Wrecker. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Gene Rollins. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. J. Meyer. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we belong to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Bernie Polad. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Wilma Smithers. 
Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Vicky Zambrano, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. In faith, may we join with these people in celestial praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. This is the point in worship where we normally collect offering, as you know, our offering plates are next to the door for those gathered here with us. For those watching at home, thank you for continuing to send in your offerings, for signing up for online giving. If you need help figuring out online giving, contact the church office and we can walk you through getting that set up. Let's join together in our offering prayer. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessing. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Let us now prepare to receive Holy Communion. Will you please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Let us join in praying as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's peace, everyone. Have a good week.